Good day, sir. I'm Dimple Caniete, your best and freshman student of Leyte Normal University San Isidro Campus for the Entrepreneurial Behavior Management subject. Here is my video recitation for the following task given. How an entrepreneur works on a business. An entrepreneur is an individual who creates a new business bearing most of the risks and enjoying most of the rewards. They are commonly seen as innovator, a source of ideas, goods, services, business, and procedures. What are the different attitudes of an entrepreneur? First, passion. Entrepreneurs should be passionate about their ideas, goals, and of course, their companies. This passion is what drives them to do what they do. Second, bravery. Entrepreneurs, like everyone else, feel fear. They are fearful that they won't succeed or fearful a, well, fearful a well-conceived idea cannot be executed. They do not, however, let these fears of failure define them. They are brave. They utilize their fear of failing to push themselves to work harder and to strive to correct the mistakes that may have caused them to fail. Third, flexibility. Flexible entrepreneurs should be aware that may that they may have to modify the route toward their established goal or even perhaps tweak that established goal in order to reach it successfully. Next, strong work ethic. It is not easy to start from the ground up and become a successful business owner. Many hours of hard work, frustration, creativity, and supervision are poured into a new venture. No successful business is created quickly, easily, or without strife. Entrepreneurs motivate themselves and continually, continually look forward. And lastly, integrity. Entrepreneurs must be able to show others they are truthful and honest, regardless of the type of business they hope to establish. Colleagues, vendors, customers, and investors must trust them. There is no way around these entrepreneurs must be trusted, and trust must be earned. What factors that affects the culture of organization? So first, gender. Second, region. Third, organization strategy. Fourth, industry, fifth, leadership, and lastly, employees. How organizations live longer. An organization strives to achieve their objectives. They may live far beyond the tenure and even the life of their individual members. Organizations have their own life cycle with different phases that we can call launch, growth, maturity, and pause. As organizations function during these different phases, their managers face challenges that are different in nature. If these challenges are manageable, then the organization grows and develops. Next, give the different rule and function of line and staffing of organization. First, line staff organization. Second, general staff. Third, specialized staff. So, what are the key elements of proper organizational structure? So, first, Work specialization. Second, departmentalization. Third, chain of chain of command. Next, the span of control. Next, centralization versus decentralization. And lastly, formalization. Why committee structural is important to organizations? A committee or a task force is the most important form of a formal group appointed by the management to perform certain functions or tasks. Committees and task forces have become more and more necessary and important as the organizations grow larger and more complex because of collective information and analysis. Committees are more likely to come up with solutions to complex problems. So, the advantages of committees are first, pooling of opinions. Second, improve cooperation. Next, motivation. So, next, dispersion of power. Next, continuity. Eight, communication. And lastly, better chances of recommendations to be accepted. What are the disadvantages of committees? First, time and cost. Second, compromise. Personal prejudice. Fourth, log rolling. Fifth, the strain on interpersonal relations. Lastly, six, lack of effectiveness.